Achieving and sustaining operational readiness during full spectrum operations demands tough, realistic, collective training. From Army aviators being called on to execute complex missions to leaders shouldered with the responsibility to synchronize air and ground maneuver and fires, the need to achieve mission readiness is clear. In answer to this collective training requirement, the U.S. Army's Aviation Combined Arms Tactical Trainer, or AVCAT, has been developed. Built and fielded by L3 Lynx Simulation and Training. In AVCAT, Army commanders have the means to conduct situational training exercises and simulation-based mission rehearsals that enable air crews to sustain and sharpen their team tactical warfighting skills. The concept of the AFCAT was started in the late 90s and the first one was fielded in 2003. We currently have 23 suites fielded with 20 in the States and three Oconus being located in Germany, Korea and Hawaii. These support the aviators in the fact that they're located where National Guard can use them, the active component can use them and the National Guard reserves. Under direction from the Program Executive Office for Simulation, Training and Instrumentation, AVCAT capabilities also have been enhanced by the integration and fielding of products delivered through the Synthetic Environment Core, or SE Core program. These products include common terrain databases, common moving models, and OneSAF. As a result of these enhancements, AVCAT's fair fight interoperability with other Army virtual simulations has expanded and is paving the way for full interoperability with other Army training initiatives. One of these initiatives is the Live Virtual Constructive Integrated Training Environment, or LVC-ITE. The AVCAT is going to be the only aviation element in the, uh, we'll call it the ITE, and they will be connected to the uh, ground simulators and the various other simulators we have in the military. This will be invaluable that this will be a central location. There's eventually going to be probably 12 or 13 ITE sites where soldiers can come to and have all the tools of virtual and constructive simulations to utilize. AVCAT is composed of three major components. The Battle Master Control Room, an After Action Review Theater, and six reconfigurable manned modules. This collective training system can be reconfigured to meet a unit commander's training needs for UH-60, CH-47, OH-58, or AH-64 helicopters. Any mix of these helicopter configurations is available to match mission requirements, and when required, AVCAT can be modified to provide reconfigurable cockpits for any helicopter in the worldwide fleet. Packaged in two semi-trailers and transportable by standard commercial tractors, this training system is designed for rapid deployment by land, sea, or air, wherever and whenever required. Depending on the training mission, AVCAT can interoperate with other AVCAT systems or ground collective simulators to create a virtual combined arms training environment. AVCAT, for instance, has been designed to interoperate with the Army's non-rated crew member manned module, or NCM-3. And it is a door gunner trainer. This will hook up with the AVCAT so that crews in the UH-60 and CH-47 will actually have live crews in a different simulator doing door gunnery, sling on operations, hoist operations, and water bucket operations. The ability to do crew coordination will be just fantastic at that point. At the heart of AVCAT is its Battle Master Control, or BMC. It's home to the Battle Master, the Unit Commander or Observer Controller, the Semi-Automated Force Controller, and up to four role players. As explained here, the BMC provides a powerful learning and operations control environment. As an uh, observer controller in the AVCAT, you're pretty much running the fight. Uh, you are what we call in the Army a battle captain. You have to control multiple aircraft, convoys, and understand what systems are being in place, like our Blue Force Tracker, and where your elements are on the battlefield at all times. And the AVCAT is a great system for that, because I can sit in there with my other observer controllers who are acting as convoy commanders for the first time and we can talk about problems that we're incurring and we can throw things at the aviators that, that normally they can't experience. This is going to be the comp card, mission card that we're going to use. Planning for AVCAT missions uses the same military planning process and automated flight planning systems that air crews use to plan actual live helicopter training missions. Target area is overcast with 100% coverage. The mission briefing for the air crews is conducted in accordance with their unit's standard operating procedure. Once the planning and briefing are complete, it's time to execute the mission. 
AVCAT's reconfigurable manned modules replicate aircraft cockpit environments and support realistic tactical training. The six manned modules can be reconfigured within 90 minutes to provide any required mix of cargo, assault, reconnaissance, or attack helicopters. AVCAT supports move, shoot, communicate, collective training tasks. Manned modules are designed with a tailored fidelity based on analyses developed and approved by Army subject matter experts for each aircraft. Consoles and instrument panels that make up each aircraft configuration are populated with a combination of active three-dimensional switches and inactive two-dimensional representations in order to fully support move, shoot, communicate tasks. Pilots view the out-the-window imagery through a helmet-mounted visual display. This technology provides pilots the same field of regard as in their actual aircraft. The helmet-mounted visual display is see-through, enabling pilots to transition from cockpit displays to the outside world seamlessly. Rather than stimulating costly aircraft equipment, night vision capabilities are simulated in AVCAT. The helmet display presents the correct field of view for night vision device imagery, NVG or PNVS. This imagery is also overlaid with the appropriate heads-up display symbology. Okay, we're uh, here to start the AVCAT AAR for the uh, air movement mission. Once the mission is over, it's time to review the team's performance and learn what went right, what went wrong, and determine how to fix it. There was a point where I thought I needed to give the cherry ice and I had no uh, essay on that LZ. Yeah. So that, that's, that was perfect, y'all yeah, took that's it, yeah. Kind of how I so. Yeah, because you guys, the Kiowas were down here south and then they started coming around and your targets took you northeast. So, I mean, maybe with your TADs you could have got eyes on it, but you're already concentrating on targets. The after action review actually begins during the mission execution as the unit commander or OC observes the team's performance. All aspects of the mission are digitally recorded for playback, including communications and engagements. When a situation develops that the OC wants to highlight in the after action review, he directs the Battlemaster to insert an event marker. When the mission is completed, the recorded data is transferred to the AAR theater. The unit commander or OC, assisted by an AAR operator, prepares the debriefing. To support the review, they have access to event marked sensor recordings, as well as plan, stealth, and individual cockpit views that can be synchronized to any point in the mission. I retasked you guys because I was worried about the uh, enemy engaging the convoys or moving into PZ Rambo. The artillery pieces, just not the uh, ammo carriers that went along with them. So as far as that, that artillery threat to the uh, LZ, we had taken care of that before moving to the BMPs. Okay, so they the Apaches neutralized the artillery piece, but they couldn't get the crew because they got retasked by a brigade to go and attack the BMPs. AVCAT's comprehensive training capability not only is better preparing units to conduct full spectrum operations, but it's also contributing to the Army's bottom line. In FY10, we flew 14,400 hours in the AVCAT. And if you take a look at those numbers and apply them to if they had flown those in the real aircraft, it would have cost roughly $45 million. The AVCAT costs $13 million to run. AVCAT is a proven system that prepares air crews for challenging future missions. Since 2003, thousands of Army aviators have trained on AVCAT, many just prior to being deployed to combat zones overseas. The hallmark of this training system lies in its ability to support solid planning, the conduct of complex missions, and the opportunity to learn not to make the same mistake twice. AVCAT, mobile, reconfigurable, interoperable and proven to provide realistic mission training and rehearsal anywhere, anytime. <laughs>